In today's video, we're going to be creating spooky or fun Halloween creatures by choosing out random words from these cups. In this cup, I've got a random animal, five of them. And in this cup, I've got five Halloween words that I'm going to combine with the animal. And we're going to create these fun and silly Halloween themed creatures. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. Our animal is going to be, <gasps> Ooh, we've got cat. And our Halloween theme for our cat is going to be a ghost. We're going to be creating a ghost kitty. All right, a ghost cat, eh? Let's make this a little bit more chibi and silly and cute. I mean, I could make it a beheaded cat. Let's be real. Its ears stick out of the sheet. Its face sticks out of the sheet. You know, I'm not satisfied with the face. I really, I feel like if we're gonna go with the very simple sort of like sheet ghost design, it needs to be really silly in a way. I'm like, did I change anything or did I just move the face over a little bit? I feel like I didn't really change anything. Maybe it could be controlling like toys around it. So you can have like a little mouse toy. I don't know, a ball toy. This looks like an egg. Okay, Casey, don't make the ball yellow or it's literally gonna look like a fried egg is floating above it. I was gonna put treats back here, but that's gonna look like a turd. Hold on. This just makes me wonder, is it a sheet ghost cat? Because clearly this cat is controlling its toys with super powered ghost abilities. So is it a ghost cat? Is it a costume? Y'all, I think this might be a real ghost cat, but then why is this ghost cat wearing a sheet costume? I'm thinking that really bright neon green would be really fun to show that there's like ghostly activity happening around these objects. And if I use a light green, it won't look like a fried egg on this toy. Maybe like a red toy with green ghostly stuff that actually might look like a moldy egg. <laughs> I guess we'll see. All right, busting out the watercolors. I sprayed them down so they're nice and moist. Oh, actually one thing I forgot I wanted to do. I was thinking about putting a circle of color behind our character since there is a lot of white happening here. I just didn't want it to be too boring. So it might be fun if we put like a circle of some sort of color and then we could also play around with the transparency of our ghost cat just to sort of you know, push the whole ghost thing a little bit more. Okay, I want to start off with a sort of yellowy, orangey ginger cat with stripes. Actually, I kind of want to give the cat a little bit of blush while the paint on the face is wet. But just a little bit wet because I don't want to spread out too much, which is always really tricky. <laughs> is that too dark? Oh no. Okay, I think I've decided to do a darker, just a little bit darker of a green circle behind the cat. So then we can play around with the glow of the objects being like a lime green. I think that'll be okay. Oh gosh, I hope that's not too much red and green. It, it looks like Christmas. That would be sad. Okay, can I add a little bit of shading? Let's see. Oh, whoa, that's, oh. <laughs> uh, that's really dark. I'm gonna add a few stripes to the tail and maybe, I don't know, the legs or the, is this somewhere? Okay, I wanna put a little bit of green on the cat to show that it's a little bit transparent, though I'm starting to realize maybe I should have used the green I used behind the cat instead of like the green I'm gonna use for the glow. So I'm gonna try to cover that up. Actually, maybe I could get a nice little gradient happening here. Let's see. I don't normally work with gradients as gradual as this, but let's just see what happens. You know what? I think I like it. I know, shocker, right? Okay, so something I was not thinking about doing with this green glow is, okay, here we go. Just painting over our objects and giving them that green glow. I think that'll help bring it all together. Gosh, don't wanna overwork the, oh no. <laughs> you don't wanna overwork the red too much or it, it reactivates and bleeds really easy and it creates a poop of brown. Okay, the last detail I want to do is to attempt to show that there is green shining under the glow here from the circle to the glowing object. And I think that's it. Here is our 
Ghost Kitty, the colors are super bright and colorful. I love the sort of like transparency effect. I like this little guy. All right, our second character creature is going to be... Doo -doo -doo. Ooh, we've got horse. And the spooky theme is going to be... Oh, pumpkin! We have a pumpkin horse. I actually already have a really good idea for our pumpkin horse. It is going to be, well, you'll see. I mean, it's a pumpkin, so it's gotta be really round and really thick. Okay, you got our horse head. We got our horse. He's gonna be so thick. Oh my gosh. I mean, we should just go super thick. Like, how thick can we go? Okay, I have this leg going back just because I thought it would be nice to sort of fill in the space and offset that. Okay, so because this is a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin horse, I just really want the face to be like, you know? I also thought it'd be really fun to turn this into like a unicorn horse with the, what's it called? The stem? So let's just put the stem on its head. I mean, unicorns are technically horses, right? They're like horse adjacent, I think. All right, maybe its tail can be like vines or something. I don't know, should I make it weird and put like a little shape on its butt? I feel like it needs more carvings. Should I just draw a star? That would be cute, I, I think. It's a unicorn, it needs to be sort of magical in that way, right? Ooh, this is spooky. I can't get over how thick this guy is. Like I said, I don't think I've ever drawn a horse so thick. I mean, what? is going on. I think I just normally like to draw really lanky, silly looking horses and this horse is just so round. Okay, can we just say that is like one of the best stars I've ever drawn in my life? Like what? Absolutely insane. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do was add a few things to the horse. You know how pumpkins are very like, it's like you took a balloon and then wrapped string around it and it's very like bulbous. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Either way, I've always felt like I've had a really hard time adding those sort of details to pumpkins. I always think it just looks weird and silly. So I'm just gonna put a few stripes just to like suggest that, nothing crazy. Just make it look more like a pumpkin a little bit. All right, I'm ready, let's do this. We're going to, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa, should have watered that down a little bit. You know, the horse is such a round, fun, cute little guy. He just looks so innocent, but I wonder if I should make him creepy by putting some blood splatters on him. Just to add a little more of color though. That is literally just adding red on top of orange, so I guess it won't really be adding that much more color to it. I'll have to think about it. I'm already sort of regretting this like neon orange and the green combo. To be honest, y'all to be honest, I don't really like orange and then this like green combo. It's like, ew, it's so bright and gross. You know what? Let's make it bright. Let's do it. We're just gonna use a darker orange for the shading. It's gonna be super bright and colorful in your face orange. I think I'm also gonna put some little spots here and there just, I don't know, to make it look more like a horse and give it some texture. Sometimes pumpkins have little weird spots. I think that would be nice. Sometimes horses have a lot of spots too. I actually might put a lot on the butt and the like nose area. I think that would sort of just add a little bit of texture that I think this little horsey needs. Yeah, I think the spots are cute. It adds a little bit of texture, makes it look a little bit more like a horse and not just a pumpkin. Okay, I think I've decided to, <laughs> I say I think I've decided as I put my brush down. I'm going to paint the circle a light blue just because blue and orange are compliments. Maybe, maybe it'll look nice. <laughs> maybe, hopefully, I mean, I've committed to it. And there it is, we have our thick pumpkin horse done. All right, our third character design is going to be with a dog, and that dog is going to be spooky with, oh, <laughs> ooh, a dog with bat wings. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see, a dog 
Hmm, definitely want to try to do something a little bit creepy, but also maybe keep it a little cute. I really want to exaggerate the shape of this dog. As you can see, it's, it's pretty creepy so far. Its head's a little big, but I was hoping to sort of exaggerate the body and make it sort of like a greyhound where it's super thin and you can see like the rib cage and just like not put a lot of meat on this dog's bones. <laughs> what? Can we make it silly? Like dogs are really lovable, but it looks like a bat, so it's misunderstood maybe? It's looking more like a bat with the ears, less like a pig. Though I will say the ears are sort of pig-like too, oh no. I knew the wings were gonna give me trouble because, you know, they're, they're wings. I would like his little legs to be sort of tucked away like a bird would, but I man, it looks so strange. This is the most lanky and awkward looking dog you've ever seen, but it is half bat, half dog. All right, this is our very awkward and strange looking um, bat dog. Oh, poo! I was gonna make it have red eyes and then I, I forgot. Wormp, wormp. The question is, does this little guy even look like part dog or does it just look like 100% weird creature? Either way, I think I would like the results of it if it looked like a sort of combination of a bat and dog and not necessarily just like a dog with bat wings. I'm already thinking our dog can be this like really dark purpley black brown color. That might be fun. Finally getting away from that orange and green finally. I was getting kind of sick of orange and green. Okay, let's make the dog this like gross. <laughs> this gross brown? I don't know, I just feel like maybe this dog just needs to be a little nasty because look at him, he's kind of, he's kind of a little nasty, what can I say? I don't know if I can resist putting a bunch of blood on this dog's face. Oh y'all, I don't, I don't think I can, I don't think I can not do it. Yep, I can't resist, we've got to do blood. Here we go. I think that's probably good enough except, let me add a little bit to the bone. And then we'll just add a little bit of yellow for the moon. It's a very subtle effect. I'm also gonna try to add a little bit of shading, like some circles on the moon. Uh, we'll see how that turns out, let's just see. Is this gonna be a horrible idea? Maybe. I guess I'll just put some texture throughout the moon so that it looks, I don't know, a little less plain, a little bit more of a visual interest and like I did it on purpose and it's not just some weird yellow thing behind our bat dog. And I guess that's it. That's our spooky bat dog. All right, our fourth creatures. We have bird and we're going to turn it into a mummy wrapped bird. Nice and spooky. This is one that I actually don't have anything in mind right away. I, I don't even know where to start. I actually love drawing birds. It's probably the only reason why I put bird. Okay, let's see. We're gonna have the wings stick out of the mummified nifts of the bird. I don't even know. Sometimes I get so stuck. I don't know where to go next. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I think this one would be really cool if it was super creepy. So we're gonna have a glowing eyeball sticking out of the mummy wrappings here. Gonna round it off a little bit. Ooh, I'm already loving this guy. Super spooky. Wonder if it's a king. I mean, I, I guess it has to be. Mummies were only made for royalty, right? So it would be weird if this was just like a peasant. <laughs> Why would you preserve a peasant? Okay, we've got our Mummified bird sort of basic down. Let's uh, add some leg here. I think I'm actually going to keep the bird's leg not wrapped up just because I don't really want the entirety of this illustration uh, to be white. I thought it would be cute if I had some little tiny birds around this bird and they were actually helping uh, wrap the bird the mummy bird or unwrap it or something. Oh gosh, oh gosh, this is another one of those things where I'm like, all right, Casey, good luck drawing two parallel lines swirling through the sky, cause that is going to be a struggle for you. Okay, I actually really liked the way I did the angle here. Maybe I should do something similar here. So it sort of like hits at 
like a point and then it loops around like that. I, okay, I like that a lot better. That looks better, cool, cool, cool. This illustration has so many straight lines. Even though I'm not super concerned about things looking perfect, it is a little intimidating. Add all these little line details. Oh my gosh, already getting wonky, oh boy. You know what, so far not so, so bad. I thought I would be a lot wonkier. I mean, it's definitely not perfect, but I definitely thought it was going to be wonkier, but I pulled through, okay. Time for these guys. Okay, yeah, that definitely could have turned out wonkier. It's not perfect, but I'm happy. This might be a really easy one to color because there's so much white on our bird, but that'll be really good to pop with our circle of color. All right, let's start with the basics. We will color the beak and the legs. All right, let's see how this looks for gold. I mixed, oh gosh, I don't think I've ever tried to really mix my own gold before. I used like a really light brown, a yellow, and a little green. So I always hear gold has green in it. And you know what? This looks pretty good. Maybe we could do a purple bird with some green birds. And also, you know what? Purple is a royal color, so that actually goes well together. We'll do these like little bit darker green birds and the circle behind our bird can be a lighter green. I don't know what it is about these colors, but they got me thinking about vegetables and I don't, I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> I also want to fix the eye. It didn't quite turn out how I would have liked it. It needs to be more red. Maybe you can just leave like a little circle in the middle. Is that creepy? Maybe that's creepy. I'll leave that. I feel like the combination of green and purple is such a risk. You either do it really well and you get a Halloween vibe or you do it badly and you end up with Barney the Dinosaur. Weirdly, I kind of feel like this illustration has fallen, I don't know, weirdly in the middle of both. It kind of looks like a creepy weird illustration but it also has cute silly characters that are colorfully colored so i don't know this one's really odd i mean obviously birds can be super colorful but this is an interesting one for sure well this one turned out a lot more interesting and weird than i expected but here it is our mummy bird Our fifth and final design, I don't even remember what it is. We've got a frog and the frog is going to be, what was it? A frog witch. That should be pretty cute, a frog witch. All right, let's do this. We're gonna draw. Oh my gosh, I just got a really good idea. Oh, this is gonna be the most ridiculous one so far. Please forgive me, it's probably going to be the most simple one so far, but it might be the best one so far. <laughs> this is already so ridiculous. I mean, do we just do we just leave it at that? I'll at least give the frog like a cute bow and the hat. I can at least do that, right? Am I really? Is this really what I'm going to do for our witch frog? The dumbest doodle, which honestly, y'all frog lovers are probably gonna love it. Yeah, that's a frog booty. <laughs> oh no, why is this like the best one out of all of them? This is why I just like really silly dumb art. <laughs> I bet you had no idea we were gonna go out with such an epic bang <laughs> as the witch frog. <laughs> this one is so simple, but it's so silly that, is it my favorite? Oh geez. Okay, we've also used our like lime green and basic green so much. I wanna use an earthy, sort of poopy green. I love this color. I just mix really quick. It's beautiful. It's great. Look at this little frog guy. I hope this doesn't turn out a little Christmassy. I'm going to add a red bow with our green frog. I'm getting a little paranoid. <laughs> Surely it will be fine. I get really nervous when I make illustrations with green and red because I automatically think about Christmas and I don't want other people to automatically think about Christmas as well because that's not obviously the vibe I'm going for. Why is this little guy so perfect? It's just so simple and so silly. This is the exact sort of artwork that I just enjoy making so much. Just silly, simple, fun things. 
Okay, so as you can see, I think I decided that I want the circle behind our frog to be a really light pink, sort of earthy, reddish pink color. A little dark, a little light, earthy. Yep, there it is. I have peaked the frog witch. <laughs> That is that for our spooky and silly Halloween creatures. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And a huge thank you to my Patreons for their monthly support. If you guys want early access to my videos, secret sketches, and live streams, check out the Patreon link in the description. Thank you guys all so, so much for your monthly support. Bye.